Hi, so let's begin our exploration of information extraction. And we're going to start with a very simple example, how to get an answer from a relational database, something we would work with with the SQL database language, for example. This week, we're going to do three things. First, we're going to try to get information from a structured relational database, which you might be familiar with if you've taken a database class. They have entities or tables. These entities have relationships between them, and each of the entities have attributes or columns. And they organize information, and we're going to try to get information from these. Later in the week, we're going to look at knowledge bases, which is trying to get sentences, parsing them, and then building relationships between the elements. For example, um, a computer is a machine. And third, we're going to look at how we can get information from unstructured text. For example, how we can get names or named entities from text so that we can then ask information about those names or about that information that the user wants. Let's look at this code. This is on your canvas and it's a little program that is called WH Cities. It listens to questions like what cities are located in a country? What cities are located in a country and have populations above a number? And you tell it what cities are located in France and have populations above a million? Paris. And just to show you, oh, spoiler, uh, Python, what cities are located in Canada, for example, Oop. Montreal and Toronto. Maybe you can ask more questions like what cities are located in Canada and have populations above 1 million. Montreal, all right. Oh, wrong window. There we go. So let's take a look at this uh, very small example program. A relational database is a way to organize data. In this kind of um, entity relationship database, someone has designed a set of tables, which are also called entities. And for each of these tables, someone has defined what are the attributes that matter for the entity. For example, if you have um, the items of an order, order items, this is an entity, and the attributes that matter are the ID of the order, the ID of the product, and the quantity that we ordered for each product. There's an entity here called a user, and it has as attributes, the ID of the user, the name of the user, the email of the user, the gender of the user, and so forth. So this is what someone decided are the attributes that matter for the entity user. And there are relationships connecting them. So for example, the user ID here is used to describe the orders because each order is associated with a user. So someone purposefully designed this uh, organization, someone decided what are the entities, what are the attributes, and then the, uh, these were filled in with information, either because someone typed it in, it was collected from some previous collection of data, and so forth. There are languages to query databases, and you might be familiar with uh, the language SQL, for example. If we wrote this command, select the ID and the status, and created at from the orders where the status is completed, what the computer would do is try to go to the table orders and then look for the columns ID, status, and created at, but only get the, uh, the items for which the status is equal to completed. And so what this would return would be something like this, a table with the ID of the order, the status, which of course all of them have to be completed, and they were created at a certain date. And notice that in the query, we did not ask for the user ID of who made the order, so it's not uh, giving us that information. So when you um, 
are using a relational database, there are specific programming languages for how to interact with this database. Maybe we can convert an English sentence into programming language, like a, like a SQL command, which is what we're doing here. Behind the small program, we have a table that has city as a column or attribute. It has country as a column, and it has the population expressed in, uh, I think, thousands. So, for example, uh, Bangkok has a population of 1.2 million, Brussels has a population of 986,000, and so forth. And if we have a question like, what cities are located in France, what cities would need uh, to be converted to select the cities from the table, city table, because this is, the, this is where the information about cities is stored. Located in France would need to be converted to where country is equal to France, because the column country is where the names are stored. And also, small thing, this would actually need to be small case, uh, lowercase, because all of these are in the lowercase. And let's see. So this is basically what the computer is doing. The computer is taking, the code is taking a question like what cities are located in Thailand and converting it to select city from city table where the country is equal to Thailand. And I'm gonna show you right now. Here's the code, here's the execution, and this is the code behind it. So let's run the Thailand one. What cities are located in Thailand? Bangkok. Uh -huh. We have a bunch of metadata here. We have NLTK and then our old friends, regular expressions. We print the question. The question should be in the form, blah, blah, blah. State your question and listen to the input from the user. We are replacing the question marks with nothing. We are replacing the word what with select. Notice that we could also ask which cities are located in Thailand, and it would give us the same information. It replaces the, I, the word city and cities for the name of the column, city from city table. Then we have here a beautiful regular expression, which has um, a capturing group here, which gets you the name of the country. So this could listen to are located in or are in. Let's give it a try. What cities are in Thailand? Bangkok. Because it's this one is an optional capturing group. And then it gets the name of the country from the capturing group, puts it here, makes it lowercase, and then re uh, replaces the string are located in where, for where country is equal to the name of the country that we captured. It also, uh, if your sentence is actually just R in, it replaces R in for where country is equal and then the name of the country that we captured. Finally, if you have the question with the populations, it does an additional procedure. It has another capturing group for it to get the number. So this is the question that we had for the cities in Canada. Uh, what cities are in Canada and have populations above uh, 1 million, for, for example, Montreal. So here, and have populations above a number, which is a capturing group. We put the number here and then divide it by 1,000 because that's the format that the table is in. And then replace the phrase and have populations above uh, plus, the po plus the population number with the SQL command that searches for this, which is, and the population is greater than the actual number. So I commented this out, but this is, this prints the SQL query that the computer constructed, and then we can send it to this module, which is an example of semantics of NLTK, which contains our database. It queries the database, it returns a number of rows, and I'm just printing the first row that it returns and making it a capital letter, Montreal. So for example, 
um, now that I uncommented this query, like, what cities are located in France? Paris. Oh, did I say that? There we go. What cities are located in France? And now it has, this is your translated SQL query. Select city, this corresponds to this, from city table, where the country is equal to France. And then the computer sends this query to a small database it has within the NLTK module, and then returns a number of rows, including the, the answer, Paris. This is how this works. And of course, notice that the solution with uh, regular expressions is what we did on, did on week one, which is just using regular expressions to transform one form of human language into another. We could use something as sophisticated as a deep learning solution so that we can transform a human question into a SQL query. In summary, this is one way that computers organize information in, a, for example, in a very structured way, like a relational database. In the following videos, we're going to study a less structured way called a knowledge base, where we have entities and attributes, but they are connected in different ways. They're connected in graphs, and we can make inferences based on the uh, rules that we have in the graphs. This way, we can uh, turn our human questions into questions that the computer can understand, for example, SQL instructions.